<laughs> Is it like, oh gosh. Hi, 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 hi. Welcome to your aunties could never Patreon episode special. Um, it's like a special, special, triple special because we're going to be getting into some real nitty gritty conversation, sensitive topic, just pre-warning for those of you who may be triggered. We are going to be talking about the real, the overturning of the Roe v. Wade decision in America. Um, but I'd like to introduce, well, I'm Auntie AK and I'm here with... Auntie Nana. And we have a very special guest in the room. I don't know if you're an auntie yet, but if you are, introduce yourself. Oh, I am. I just forgot that I was an auntie. Hi, everybody. I'm Jessica and I am an auntie. Hi, Jessica. Um, could you just give us, give our, our people a, a little bit of a brief intro of what you do, who, what, who you are and what you do, actually? Okay, so I'm from America. If you couldn't tell by the accent, I'm from California. I came out to London in September of last year for school, and I'm studying for psychology. I'm an athlete. I've been on other podcasts. I work with a podcast that is called The Free Game Show. That's how I met Auntie Nana. And um, yeah, that's the gist of me in a little small package. Thank you very much. And thank you for joining mm -hmm. us today. Um, it's a hot topic that's been raging. Um, mm -hmm. I might throw it over to Auntie Nana to lead. <laughs> okay. it, it no worries, no worries. Um, Okay, so the main thing for me, I guess, that it's just I wanted to have a dialogue with somebody who was pro-life mm -hmm. and find out how they're feeling about what's happened, like if this is a, a positive step, um, and just what it's like for, for an American as well, like because we have our opinions over here, but at this moment in time, it's not actually affecting the UK in any way. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to know how you see what's happened and get some context as to how it is in America as well from your family that's over there, how they're dealing with this. Like, but really to start off with, I would say your thoughts and why you would consider yourself pro-life. Um, so I, at first, like for years, I've always struggled with the pro-life, pro-choice uh, question. And I've always just said pro-choice because of uh, my religious standing and just thinking about like, oh, God gave us a choice. So everybody just has a choice and just leave it at that. You can choose what you want to do. And then once I learn more about the, learn more about the background within Planned Parenthood and um, just the abortion and who started Planned Parenthood and the agenda essentially, it made me a little bit uneasy. And so that's when I was, I switched over to pro-life. I'm not like the pro-lifer that is uh, shouting at you and telling you what you need to do. I'm still like, hey, this is that's your life. You do what you want to do. For me, I do. I choose pro-life. And um, with that in the States, this, <laughs> I didn't even know this was going on until I turned on open Netflix and I just saw everything. Boom, 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 boom. And I was like, what's happening? What's going on? And then I read it and I was like, oh, wow, this is very interesting. I never thought that this would be a thing ever in the United States. I always thought that they were just going to keep it with uh, legal abortions across the whole state. So it's been a hot topic. Most definitely. And I think when you say about when you do some research into Planned Parenthood, again, from the UK side of things and being quite mm -hmm. pro-black, I've definitely had and heard enough discussion and seen enough information about the targeting of black neighborhood, the tar targeting of black families, the targeting mm -hmm. of black mothers, um, and especially with being in, in certain ghettoized areas that there are more kind of clinics in those, mm -hmm. those, those, those areas in, con um, what's the word, in, in tight clusters than mm -hmm. there are suburbs and so from a black perspective and the general euthanasia not even euthanasia is genocide actually mm -hmm. that's um, been exacted towards us and especially in america i can understand that position but is that the stance is that what started to make you unnervy about planned parenthood or was there anything else um no that was the the main thing i think there's other things that planned parenthood does and i think those other things are helpful 
um, for people who can't afford to go to a doctor. Because my, myself, I've used Planned Parenthood not for an abortion. I haven't had that situation come across my life, thank God. But I've been to Planned Parenthood because I couldn't afford to go to a doctor to get a checkup or whatnot. So I think there's other things that Planned Parenthood does greatly, but it's just that side of it is it just doesn't sit well with me. So that's when I was just thinking, it's like, how am I going to support something that essentially doesn't want me here on this earth if it had a chance to take me out? So in, so like looking at the stats with Planet Parenthood, it's mm-hmm. like they, they are 80% in minority neighborhoods. 80% of their facilities are in minority neighborhoods. Mm-hmm. Did you see that as well? Is there like an advertising campaign? Because this is something yeah. that I've been seeing people who are kind of pro-life saying like mm-hmm. there's this real booming market for abortions and targeting black people. But then when you look at the stats, abortions have actually dropped year on year since mm-hmm. the 80s. So it's like, is there this booming or are we being triggered into kind of thinking it's targeting us and and going when it comes life because of that mm. I don't think it's like so much in your face um mm. to go back to the minority part it's like we see it and but until someone tells us that like this is like why why it's in these areas you don't notice it because the area I live in in California is predominantly Hispanic and so there's one up the street one around the corner and I'm like why are there so many in these areas and then learning more about Planned Parenthood I'm like oh that's why I don't think it's so much like in your face that they're advertising it I think just the areas that they're in and how they how they go around to saying not saying but talking about abortions it's like they make it seem like it's like a little like ring like oh you want an abortion it's kind of like that they don't make it seem that bad and it's easy accessible so you don't have to um advertise a lot about it because people know people know where they need to go if they need to get a pregnancy test or need to get a blood test or need to get anything done at a low cost or free so they don't need to really advertise anything I think I definitely have a problem with those kind of institutions targeting or appearing to be targeting non-white areas Mm -hmm. for sure and especially areas where there is high poverty and for some reason having kids and poverty goes hand in hand Mm -hmm. however what then do you do because it is then again because as the, the, the the rhetoric that's out in the media is that though this is happening the women in the suburbs, and let's just say, let's just be very black and white, <laughs> black and white, <laughs> white women, affluent white women who want to get an abortion, they will still be able to go and get their abortions safely mm-hmm. in the hood or in areas that are highly um, populated with non-white people. This is where it's going to be a problem. Health risks become a factor. Accessibility becomes a factor. And it's not, and we are more at risk if these facilities are removed. So what do you do? So essentially, when I heard about the uh, Roe versus Wade, I thought they had canceled it completely. But until I read more, it wasn't that they were taking it away. It's now turned over to the states. It's not a countrywide law anymore. It's now turned over to the state's um, a ju- ju- jurisdiction to decide whether they want it in their state or not. And so it's still accessible to those people that live in those states, but now it's just harder to get it if your state, say Michigan says, no, we don't want it at our state, but Ohio does. You just have to drive to the other state. It's not as easy to get an abortion now, but there still is ways to get around it. And my main thing is I would love for people to, think more before they put themselves in that situation because now it's not just going to cost you to get an abortion. It's going to cost you gas or a flight or it's going to cost you a hotel. It's just going to cost you more. What you would spend just for an abortion is going to cost you greater now. And so in a sense, it's like for me, how I'm looking at it, it's like trying trying to like tweak people's gears into like not putting themselves in that situation so they don't have to pay a thousand plus dollars out of pocket. 
Do you think that's like likely to take place though? Because in putting that all into action now, like let's say, so mm-hmm. again, what everyone's talking about is like the southern states are generally, the southern states and the Midwest are probably going to like make it illegal and make it really hard and mm-hmm. close down lots of abortion clinics. Mm-hmm. So for the poor people, or not even just the poor people, because it's not just poor people that get abortions, mm-hmm. but like people that don't have the means to leave or Mm -hmm. um, capacity to sort themselves out in that way how is that going to affect them and and all of these unwanted children that come along do you Mm -hmm. think that actually like the america like states have the capacity to effectively look after children that come from this like there is enough um places in care adoption like the system Mm -hmm. is ready to take on this from my knowledge of uh, the system. Um, So to answer the first part of your question, I would love to see people mindsets change and for that not to be a problem. But I know that it's it's life, it's the world and people are still going to do what they want to do. People can find a way to get botched BBLs. They're going to find a way to get whatever it is, whether they got to sell something over here, move things around. Oh, I won't pay this bill this month, but I'm going to get this abortion. Mm -hmm. So people are going to do what they want to do and figure it out. Um, But from my knowledge of the system, we can barely (laughs) handle the kids that we have right now in the system. And I know that if I would hope and pray that with this change of the Roe v. Wade, that it would, um, it wouldn't overpopulate the system even more, but it would essentially decrease it. But that's a whole nother subject. I have 20 questions to ask you in one. Mm-hmm. And, I, and everybody watching, this is not, um, I hope this is not, this is what is, we're really, I'm really grateful for your time, Jessica, and yeah. to have this conversation. Um, and we're not like tag teaming on you, but it is that mm-hmm. so we have so many questions about this and it's really great to get hear from the horse's mouth as it were. Obviously you don't speak for every American going in the world, but it's just helped to have this dialogue. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'll try, uh, make, okay. One thing, how do you, okay, let's get personal a little bit. How do uh-huh. you navigate life as a young woman, um, auntie woman who, <laughs> You know, if you, I don't, I don't, you know, you can be as candid as you like. I don't know your background, I don't know your situation, I don't know whether you have trauma or not, and things like that. And the onus being put on young girls and boys, but young girls are specifically to have their wits about them, to not sleep with a guy before mm-hmm. they're ready, to make sure uh, they have all their, you know, their job, their money, everything in, in place. They've got to have their full capacity and not ever make a mistake. So never get in a situation to have an abortion. It's a lot to put on. And we've talked about accountability mm-hmm. and onus. And I have a daughter. Trust me, I instill into her how to mm-hmm. act. But ish happens. And I'll mm-hmm. be very honest and say, I got pregnant, but I used protection. I, and and if I wasn't in the right time, I was 22 when I found okay. out I was pregnant. And if I wasn't in, and I had the conversation with myself, should I go forth or should I not? Mm-hmm. I decided to have my child, but shit happens. And life is life, as you say. How have mm-hmm. you managed to navigate not getting into that situation and how i mean how i don't know i, I can't yeah it's, it's a bit of a lofty question because i want to say well how do we stop everybody from doing this it's important yeah. to me but how do we um, have, so maybe some tips on how you mm-hmm. navigate that those testy times so um i've i've never been in that situation where i have been pregnant but i've had scares where i thought i was pregnant and i've had those conversations with myself like well if i am what what's gonna happen and so I feel like there if anybody any woman is obviously I can't speak for all women but I feel like there may be an inkling when it's like a young age or whatever age you're at and you're not ready for kids and you're at a scare you're like oh no what's gonna happen so for me I've had those conversations with myself if it came down to that but on the flip side how I've navigated it I've tried to be as safe as possible but if uh, I'm not as safe if I need to be I do use the contraceptives that are provided for women 
after the fact or before the fact just to make sure. And also I try to keep up with where it is that um, I am the most fertile in my cycle to make sure that I'm not engaging in sex at that time to put myself in that difficult position. All the time it doesn't work, but you know, <laughs> I, I just try to be as cautious as possible knowing that I, right now, I don't want to have children and whoever I'm engaging with, I know they probably don't want it either. And just being as just safe. And so that's how I've navigated it. That's fair. I I have a big one because I really want to get your thoughts on this. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's going to be what I want. Do, do, you, do, you, do you class yourself as African-American or Black American or just American? African American. African American. Yeah. Okay. So you see, I'm, I'm sure you've probably heard of this. Um, that there's there's this spate of thought that the reason why this has come across isn't got anything to do with like really going down to pro-life. It's about saving white, white. people because it, by 2045, it's predicted that there's going to be more um, Latinos and minorities than white people, especially in the southern states. So in order to save as many white babies as they can, they need to stop abortions because at present time, figures are showing that it's about 35% of abortions are done by white women. Do you think that there is any truth to this in, your, in, in what you've gathered, research, being around? Like, do you think that there, mm. there could be some merit to this line of thinking, that That's this is why it's happened? Exactly what I wanted to ask. <laughs> when it for me, um, when it comes to when it comes to life, I'm always like thinking about like, well, like why? I'm like a little conspiracy theorist. I always think about like the other side of things. So I can't speak on that. Oh yes, I heard that. I haven't heard that yet, and that's interesting because it's honestly a possibility if the majority or a big chunk of women that are getting abortion are white women, then that means that more of that race is dying off more than another race. And if that, like statistics, if that keeps going, then it decreases, decreases, decreases. Yeah. And so with, with what I know about the Planned Parenthood and what the founder of it actually wanted and how it's kind of not going that way. So I could see how the government would make this change to mm -hmm. have that, to make sure that that's not a thing that happens. So I, I'm always thinking about like another side to things. Yes. yes. I mean, yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Okay, because I, I'm I'm going down that road. I think mm -hmm. what, I think it's real. <laughs> we talk about it all the time, and I think mm -hmm. I definitely think there's some. It, well, look, um, it was a U.S. representative Mary Miller called the Supreme Court's ruling of Roe v. Wade a victory for white life. That was he did. She did that at mm -hmm. um, former President Donald Trump's uh, rally in where is it? Men Mendon, Illinois. So there's a real train of thought about this, and we've had. Even with our, oh, sorry. Even with our um, king in waiting, Prince William, he even made comments about Africa being, you know, overpopulating and destroying the world, basically. I'm paraphrasing greatly, but he said those words. Um, I don't know how Africa is destroying the world when well, a this big chunk of the resources that people get are from Africa, but this is, what, this is what I'm saying. So there's, there's real... There's real, there's real thought process that we have to really think about as black people. And I think it is, I think I'm extremely pro, what am I, pro-choice? Pro-choice, <laughs> I'm trying to say pro-life, because I am pro-life. I want us to live and survive. I'm pro-black life. Mm -hmm. I think that's me for sure. Yeah. And I'm pro-choice. I'm, I'm concerned about this. I'm also concerned about it coming over to the UK because we do have some staunch um, Christian politicians who are trying to enforce uh, abortion being illegal over here so I'm concerned about what happens because we tend to copy America quite often um, even though we might take a long time to do it I, I don't know do you uh, what, what do you think is going to happen <laughs> I, 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 I don't know being 
living here in London, I've seen so many things from the outside in, and it's it's a lot <laughs> mentally. So I don't I don't know what's going to happen. Like my my hope would be essentially for I would just say the black community that we would be able to sit down, think, and be able to come to a sentence like people are gonna be people. Sex is gonna be sex. Like people are not gonna stop it now that this is <laughs> this law has changed. But just thinking about who it is that you want to engage in that with is this a person that you possibly want to have a child with if it comes to that because it is is not going to take away that possibility. It's a huge possibility that could happen, but it's hard to shift the mindset of a community when like the main people that we put on a pedestal are projecting something different. Like, oh, you can have all these different baby mamas. You can have this type of life. And people don't disconnect from that and say, that's not my life. I'm here. They have the money to have different baby mamas, X, Y, Z, be with this person one day, that person. I don't have the means for that. So it's, I don't, I couldn't say what's going to happen, but I'm hoping this is a good thing for the country but you just got to see it play out. No, I hear you. I I, I don't think it's going to be a good thing for America. No. Uh, I sit on the fence. Uh, not on the fence, but I, I really am pro-Black life. Mm -hmm. But I'm also very much pro-choice mm -hmm. with slight caveats to that choice. Like, I don't think abortion should ever be used like a, like a, 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 a contraception. It should be the mm -hmm. extreme case. Um, and I, I don't know if, I'm, I don't really agree with government stepping in and being like, there should only be, two, like you only have an abortion twice or or any of those mm -hmm. types of things. I, I almost in some ways kind of agree that it should be done at state level because I really mm -hmm. do believe in decentralization of any type of power and it should be like, you know, local community or mm -hmm. area type of power. Um, like tribes, like go, uh, I, I think that works out better. But if mm -hmm. you're in a space where it has been governmental rule and then it changes and you're on the opposite side of that, mm -hmm. that to me is quite problematic as well. Um, and I think America overall is really broken and the value system placed on on Black people, it's like, if if you're gonna have a child and it go and then you also are like but I didn't want this child and I'm gonna turn it over to the state black yeah. people don't fare too well that way mm -hmm. so I'm more worried about that like what's being put in place for the eventualities of that how how is that gonna work out I don't I don't I don't know and I'm not hopeful <laughs> not hopeful for you guys <laughs> Being an American away from home and being in London, what do you see? You said you see like it's a lot, but what what are some of the scary similarities and what are some of the, maybe the, you can exhale in the UK a little bit or is it just, you know, are we just yeah, matched? all the same? Um, uh, it's, it's hard to like pinpoint what's like different. It's more so, for me, it's more so a feeling of just like, who I can, I can be free. I heard someone saying in a video, that they didn't experience true freedom. And this wasn't, this was a black, uh, not a black man, a white man. He was saying that he didn't experience true freedom until he came, till he left the United States and came to Europe or came to, I think he moved to the UK or somewhere in Europe. And it's just a feeling that, um, I guess you can say a freedom that, I don't know how to explain it, but I've seen just how, just with COVID, how, you have handled it out here and you're able to live life now. It's, it was handled a lot better out here than I would say in the States. Uh -oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it's just little things like that that I've seen. I'm like, man, I know that the United States is huge, but I feel like there could have been more cautious taken up front to then project to where now we're able to not have to wear masks, but able to be more free and be more cautious but um it yeah it's just a feeling I can't I don't know how to like explain or articulate it it's just it's different well, the, the freedom thing is I get it um it's funny because go on no no sorry to cut. 
No, no, let's go, go. go. I was going to say, because be, being from the UK, going to America, especially Auntie Nana and I have definitely gone to travel to America a couple of times together. And there is a sense of freedom and, and um, opportunity in America. And that's, that's always the uh, mm -hmm. transaction between, especially black Brits and going over to America and seeing our black cousins kind of thriving in a way that it's not possible. We're, little, we're more fragmented and isolated over here where there, because you have the collective, whether it's black American, African American story, there's a unity that makes it easier to get things done because you're moving in synergy. And though you have your interstate, interculture rivalries at, on mass, you guys have a collective unity that is appealing to us. But I know the perspective is different. Every mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. It's going to be interesting, man. It's, it's, it's people, isn't it? I think the biggest thing is the sheer amount of African Americans that there are yeah. compared mm -hmm. to there being Black Brits. So when you go, it's like, even if I have a product and I can just sell to black people, I can easily become a millionaire there because yeah. there's so many of you, where it's really hard over here to have that mm. same type of gravitas, uh, especially like you just think of just the sizes of states, like going to Atlanta or um, we've done um, Essence Festival New um, Orleans. in New Orleans. Wow. And seeing the amount of black women, I've never seen that before in my life. Like 500,000 black women descending on anywhere is like, well, that's literally like, it's all of us, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> One place, like, it's like, Aside from going back home to our own home country. Yeah, you just like... don't see that in the West. So that's the thing as a black Brit, when you go over, there is like, oh my God, the shiny lights. But I get, I still have a fear just because the police carry guns. Yeah, because of what that we know. I mean, it's so unsettling. Each mm -hmm. time you see somebody, and it's just like, um, because it's, you, you only see that here probably yeah. once a year. Or if you're like hanging around Westminster, you're going to see them like guarding the palaces and everything. But you mm -hmm. just don't see that. That's the, I, I find that really unnerving being in America. It's just the sheer amount of guns that are around. How do you feel about guns though? Like gun law? What's your position on that? I was just uh, having a conversation with myself earlier, trying to like understand like what could happen, like what could they yeah. do better? Because personally, I've I've fired a gun before, and just like the feeling of it to know that this thing that I have in my hand can either save somebody or kill somebody, and it's like oh, I don't I don't want to have this power in my hand. I don't want this. It just was an uneasy feeling, and. It's such a sticky and just like, just, I don't know how to like say like, oh, this should be this. But I, I think there has to be better steps to go into play before you can purchase a gun. You can't just walk in and just say, I want this gun or that type of gun. There has to be like, okay, what do you want the gun for? What do you, if you're hunting, cool. I had friends who had guns growing up hunting. Go ahead, go shoot some deer, squirrel, birds, birds, whatever you do. But when it comes over into, oh, I'm gonna use this to for a personal thing, that's when I'm like, no, there has there has to be more back background checks, mental health checks, whatever it is to be able to be more safe with the guns. Um well, our time is running out. I don't know. I feel like we've asked you so many questions. Is there anything you want to talk to us? Like, come back at us for our pro-choice views. I don't know if there's anything you want to challenge us on. Not challenge, but even ask us. Mm -hmm. from um, why do you ladies believe in pro-choice? Why do you choose pro-choice? Um, well, for me, I, I don't know. I, I just can't. Im I can't imagine being in a situation where... I got pregnant and there's a, there's a, there's a, a situation where there's, there's a, there's a service that I could use that could stop me being pregnant and I can't access that because of the government law. Um, and I think I don't want the government ruling my body any more than it does already. And because, and also, I don't know. I, I think I've never had to make, I think because it's not been a, a conversation I've had to have or a decision I've had to like really argue about. It just seems like natural things like, yeah, of course, if I want to do this, I should be able to do this. And also I've been fostered before and not because my parents didn't want me, but because they were in a situation where they couldn't cope with me being in the home or thought maybe me being out of the home would 
prove better for myself and for them whilst they sorted themselves out. And some of my experiences weren't great. And, I, and I, I'm not speaking on my parents. It's maybe it's a bit abstract to talk about my parents in that way, but what if they didn't have me and their situation was different? Maybe mm -hmm. their lives could have been better in a sense. And I don't think like that. I never think I've never been made to feel like that. But that, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. they made the decision, but they could have made the decision not to just because they weren't in the right type, right frame of mind or whatever position to do it. So I don't know. I just, um, I just believe we should have the choice because I, I've, I've seen the other side of kids that are unwanted or kids that are, have been grown, have grown up with drugs in their system, kids that have grown up who end up being, you know, there's a yeah. lot. Yeah. There has to be a choice. I think for me, it's just that it's, um, I just think that women should have full autonomy over their bodies and we should be treated like fully fledged human beings that can reason it out, that can think through what we want to do and access the, the, the things that we need in order to have the best life possible. Because the, because the science is there, because it's, it's able to be done relatively safely, like now you can take two pills and it is like, it's like 93% of abortions are done before 10 mm -hmm. weeks anyway. And that is a cluster of cells. So I just think it's just the safest way. I do think on the other side of that, education is really important. And we probably need to talk about abortions in society a lot more, yeah. just so that people know the mental health implications when you do go through it, because yeah. those services are not there. So to just have people having two, three, four abortions, that to me is showing mentally they are absolutely not healthy so mm -hmm. it's those types of things need to be in place before you take sweeping steps you know it just seems like a really big measure like we're just going to make it illegal yeah. so you have everything in place and and that seems to be something that I keep on seeing with western societies it's like big gestures it's and like over sweeping it, instead of like yeah, things in between like, like, really address mm -hmm. the layers and then maybe we could get so that it's so far down but we don't actually need it legally because the education is right and it can mm -hmm. literally be doctor to doctor just working with a patient and and deeming it appropriate yeah. that would be great i know we don't live in that utopia but i do mm -hmm. and that's why i'm like i'm halfway i don't think it should be easy access at all because i think it is a procedure that has a lot of ramifications Absolutely. and when you go through the numbers of abortions, that's shocking. Yeah. And also, I don't trust what they're doing with the fetuses as well. It's like, and I'm, I'm a conspiracy theorist, like, but I don't trust them. <laughs> In all way rounds, I'm like, I don't trust this. Um, and I feel like we're really being manipulated. Like emotionally, I think women are being mm -hmm. manipulated back and forth to feel so many different ways that we don't know our head from our tails and we get blamed for a lot as well and can can some men step up and be like why um why are there so many unwanted pregnancies from single women where's the mm -hmm. where's the man where's the man's yeah. accountability that's the it's always on the woman to bear the brunt why yeah. not vasectomies at 18. <laughs> vasectomy <laughs> Then we won't have any children. <laughs> That'd be it. The cancellation of all races. <laughs> Let's pause everybody. Um, <laughs> that would be because I, I, I do. I, as Auntie Nana was saying, I definitely agree with you, um, Jessica, and that like, education and and also having that pause conversation. But we don't have family planning in the real sense of family planning mm. taught in schools. Yeah. We don't have family planning mm. how to be a you know. It's just, it's, it's just, just, it's just sex crazy. conversations. Like, right. oh, this is sex. This is how it works. Boom. People are like, okay. And it's like, they don't have a, the conversations about, they have conversations about abortions. Like, oh, it's just killing a baby, but not what ha actually happens, the pill way, the surgical way, and then what effects it has on the women's body. Yeah. And it's just knowledgeable. A lot of people are ignorant in the world when it comes to yeah. a lot of stuff like this. And if, I was just thinking, I don't know if they're taking away a lot of Planned Parenthoods in cities or if they're canceling abortions. I would love for them to keep Planned Parenthood because there's things that, like I said in the beginning, that help 
at Planned Parenthood are very, very helpful. But just that side of abortion, if they want to take it out, take it out, but leave the building, leave Planned Parenthood and all the other things that come with it. Okay. okay. Yeah. No, I feel you on that. See, there's not too many differences. That's the... Depending mm-hmm. on who you speak to, Auntie Nancy. There is, yes. there is. I mean, there, there are like some staunch, I mean, this is a thing because it's like you mentioned religion, but I I haven't got the sense that you are like a zealous Christian. Hi, everyone. Just, I'm just chasing Yari, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I hadn't got the sense that you were like, like a fundamental Christian. So, mm-hmm. but how do you feel about that? Like just that kind of, christian stroke like mormon quaker kind of indoctrination in to american policy do you see that as a as a movement that's taken hold like that type of conservatism where the the i guess the republican party lean into that and are able to push things forward but then you have the other side you have like liberals or democrats and like how do do you think it's 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 fair I guess, that one side's views, a religious view, can Mm -hmm. dominate the rest of the country. I don't think it's fair because, like I said in the beginning, God gave everybody a freedom of choice. And Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like it shouldn't be shoved down people's throat as it is. It's like, hey, this is who I am. I'm going to come as you as I am. And I, and like, as Christian, we should expect people to come to us as they are, not try to essentially change them, but in hopes that their lives are changed for the better. And just by being around us or being in it, but I don't think that it should be essentially shoved down people's throat because they're going to have a choice whether they want to believe or not believe when it comes down to it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I agree with that. I feel that. How do you see it, like being involved in a red pill channel? How do how do you how do you navigate that space? I'm always I'm super surprised that there Mm -hmm. are so many black men Mm -hmm. that have the views shared in the red pill community. And as a black woman, I feel that we get blamed for a shitload of stuff. Like literally mm. like opinions like black women are overweight, black women are rude, black women are gold diggers. It just seems to be heavily weighted against black women. Mm-hmm. So within that space and what you've seen, am I wrong or have you seen that too? Being in that space of red pill, it's it's mind boggling. And every time I watch like a new video or a new segment, my brain is just like scrambled and I'll catch myself outside of it thinking about this, thinking about that. And I'm like, my brain never turns off when it comes to it. But I haven't essentially seen um, a lot of uh, a lot of people blaming Black women. I haven't seen that side of red pill yet. I hope I don't. But um, <laughs> I, I haven't seen that. I know I've had conversations on a video from what I've heard from Black men on Black women and how in relationships, how it is and why essentially they go the opposite way with whoever. And so I've talked about that, but on like videos and what I've heard, I haven't really heard or seen a lot about that. Well, what's the dominant reason why a Black man would be like, I've had this experience with a Black woman and now I'm going to date out of my race? So it's not necessarily an experience. It's how, um, and I've heard this from like several Black men, they love Black women, but it's hard because they feel like that they have to go out into the world and be on be a certain way when it comes to, uh, when it comes to be a certain way when it comes to being them and then come home and they feel like they have to still be on. Not all Black men, but it's just that, that type of feeling that they still have to be on for their wife and they want to be able to like relax. I want to argue that point so bad, but it's not with you. <laughs> I know, I know. I wasn't going but off I into it. We, we will talk again. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, ladies, for having me on. I've loved this conversation. Jessica, Thank please you. let our audience know where we can find you, where they can follow you and support you. 
Um, you guys can follow me on Instagram at its.ya.girl underscore Jess. And then on YouTube as well at it's your girl Jess. Is that ya, Y-A or Y-A-H? Uh, Y-A. Okay, cool. Just checking. Yeah. Just speaking. <laughs> <laughs> I will put it in the link as well. But thank you so much, Jess. Thank awesome. you. Thank, thank you, ladies. Day. Yes, I appreciate y'all too. Take care. And you too. Bye. Bye. Okay.